Brian, the Engineering Integration Manager for the Wrangler 4xe. So this is a great opportunity for me to, to speak to folks and get some first-hand impressions on what we've been working on uh, in Auburn Hills and around the world, frankly, for the last couple of years. You know, since 1941, Jeep has had this position of 4x4 leadership that nobody can touch. And so we're very excited to, to keep that foundation and, and broaden it to include this, this new 4xe uh, plug-in hybrid technology. You've heard all the, the, the numbers already, right? 375 horsepower, 470 foot-pounds of torque. You know, it's 21 miles of electric range, 49 MPGE. Those are, those are good numbers, but let's talk a little bit about the, the hardware and the software behind all of that. So I'll start behind me here, obviously. This is a, a naked 4xe. Starts with the engine. So this is the 2-liter GMET4 turbocharged direct injected four-cylinder engine. We've been putting this in Wrangler since 2018. It's tried and tested. And to be honest, it's not very much changed for this application, the gas engine that is. What is different is the high voltage system. So the first high voltage component is at the front of the engine. I'll point it out to you a little bit later on today. But that's what we call the P1 motor. And Building on the e-torque belt starter generator system that we've been selling for several years in Wrangler already, this is a high voltage device that basically replaces the starter and alternator functions of a conventional Wrangler. Moving back into the transmission here, the P2 motor is at the front of the transmission, and that's the, the primary electric drive motor in the car. So that's the motor that can drive you right up at highway speeds, it can, in fact, do the entire Rubicon Trail with the engine shut down. There are a couple of clutches as well in, this, uh, in the front of the transmission. And combined with some creative software, there are a lot of different modes this powertrain can, can operate in. Obviously, engine off, pure electric driving through the drivetrain is one of them. But also, uh, the engine and the electric motor can work together in a couple of interesting ways. They can both drive the car, and that's how you get those big combined power numbers. Or, in fact, while you're driving the car, you can choose to run the engine and pull power off of the generator so you can drive down the car and drive down the road and charge the battery at the same time. The rest of the drive line is pretty standard Jeep Wrangler. There's the 8-speed torque flight automatic transmission here. A little bit different, no torque converter, but otherwise it's a tried and true transmission that we've put in uh, a lot of vehicles. Behind that is the transfer case. This is a full-time active transfer case. There are two different models of that transfer case, uh, but it's always a uh, two-speed, full-time four-wheel drive transfer case. The Sahara and high-altitude models get a 2.72 to 1 low range ratio, and the Rubicon gets a 4 to 1 ratio, just like the gas cars and diesel cars do. Moving back here to the Sorry, let me talk about the transfer case. There's, there's, so there's five modes in the transfer case, and you'll get a chance to experience all of them today. Um, two high is uh, best for fuel economy. That's rear-wheel drive only. Four high automatic, that's your set it and forget it mode. You'll get the best acceleration performance in that mode. And then, of course, if you shift over to the right-hand side of the gate, that's where your off-road modes are. So four-wheel drive lock, both high range and low range ratios. Underneath the rear seat, inside the cabin of the vehicle, is the big battery. So this is 17 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. Uh, we chose the lithium ion chemistry because it has no memory effect, so you can charge or not, doesn't really matter. And also because it has a pretty wide operating envelope. So what that means is uh, it can operate cold, warm, charge, discharge, doesn't really care very much. Now that said though, the battery does like similar temperatures to, to the rest of us, about 70 to 100 Fahrenheit. And therefore, in order to guarantee that, we've got a dedicated cooling and heating circuit to keep that battery uh, at its operating temperature for the best range. A couple other things about the vehicle. Uh, it was necessary to make pretty extensive changes uh, to both the body and the chassis to accommodate this system. But while doing that, the engineers paid very special attention to classic Wrangler numbers like approach angle, departure angle, breakover angle, ground clearance, in order to guarantee that the Jeepness remains, and in fact, is improved by the electric powertrain. The real great thing about the electric powertrain is it actually has served to uh, lower and bring backwards the center of gravity, which helps us for our on-road steering, ride, and handling performance. Let's talk about charging time briefly. Using the included level one charge cord, 
The Jeep charges in about 12 and a half hours, assuming you have good current available at the wall. If you wanted to use a level two charging uh, apparatus, or EVSE we call it, then that'll be about two and a half hours. Now you find those charging stations at, in public, maybe in a park or at your employer, and some people choose to install one of those in their house. Let's move over here to uh, fully built vehicles. We can talk a little bit more about some of the features. Obviously, Jim mentioned uh, standard wheels and tires, the blue accents. I won't review that, but a couple points here. Uh, locking fuel door is new for the 4xe application. That's uh, uh, powder coated aluminum, which matches the charge port door here. It's a really nice feel. Take a, take a look at that. You'll also notice while you're driving a standard pedestrian alert system. Now this is uh, something that a lot of electric cars have dabbled in and you're going to see it more and more in the future. So when you're driving the car and the engine's off, below 20 miles an hour you'll hear a, a rushing sound. And that's basically intended to warn either uh, yeah, distracted pedestrians or, or maybe uh, pedestrians you know, who are visually impaired or something like that, that there's a very quiet vehicle approaching. Now when you get into the vehicle, the first thing you'll see here is the e-select drive mode selector. So there are three buttons here, hybrid, electric, and e-save. I'll talk a little bit about how those work and when you might use them. The hybrid mode, uh, in the hybrid mode, the Jeep knows that an electric mile is less expensive than a gas-powered mile. And therefore, if you have both to choose from, the default performance is to first deplete the battery before then seamlessly transitioning to gas engine on hybrid operation. And that's what the hybrid mode does. If you want to drive with the engine off, you press the electric button, and that will keep the engine off unless you really need it on. Like, for example, if you step to wide open throttle acceleration, or if you're driving faster than highway speeds, the engine will start automatically to, to help you get what you're asking for. And the third mode is e-save. This is kind of an interesting one. Let's say you're taking a highway drive out to an off-road trail and you want to do some electric off-roading when you get there. That's what you'd use eSafe for. It'll make the car a hybrid right now and not bring down that battery, those battery miles yet. In fact, a matter of fact, you can actually configure in the radio screen, you can configure that mode to not only hold the battery where it's at, but also recharge it slowly while you drive down the road. Pretty neat feature. A couple other things you'll see on the inside of the vehicle. The instrument cluster is new, you saw it on the way over here. The left binnacle is the analog tachometer. Now that tachometer only shows you the engine speed, not the electric motor speed. So if you're driving down the road and the tachometer is at zero, it's, it's off-putting at first, but then you realize, oh, that's because the engine's not running. That's a good signal that that's what's happening. On the right-hand side of the instrument cluster is a charge and power gauge. And you probably saw it on the way over here. Up means you're driving the car. Down means you're regenerating or recuperating energy back into the high voltage battery. One other feature I want to call your attention to is max regen. There's a, a button down near the volume knob in the radio, and that's, uh, that turns on this max regen feature. It's got a blue icon. Check it out on the road and, and even off road too. What that feature does is it remaps the accelerator pedal, so at zero or low accelerator pedal positions, the car will actually apply the regen brakes and slow the car down. This allows a driver to keep their foot on one single pedal. A lot of companies call this one pedal drive. When you pull up to a stop sign, approaching traffic, and it's a, it's a great driver aid that a lot of battery electric cars have implemented a similar thing. It's pretty unusual in a plug-in hybrid, especially one with a step gear transmission like this, but we're, we're pretty happy with the way it works. Let's talk about charging for just one moment. You can see the battery charge indicator on top of the instrument panel. This is something that allows you, at a glance, 360 degrees around the car, to quickly visually say, is my battery charged yet? Looks like almost ready to go. There's also a feature called scheduled charging that's available in the radio screen as well, in the, in the eHybrid app that you'll see on the screen. And what that allows you to do is to take advantage of off-peak electricity rates. Let's say you get home from the office at uh, 5 p.m., you want to uh, plug your car in now and have it start charging at midnight when your electricity gets cheaper. That's what that feature is for. So obviously there's a lot of features here, right? Um, but the, the, the really cool thing about the car is the way the electric and the gas powertrains work together to enhance the behavior of the vehicle. And I think the, the most exciting story here is because it's a Wrangler, what electrified off-road brings to the experience.
Customers are excited about this, right? It's lots of torque right now, obviously, very precise speed control, and near silent operation. That's especially cool with the doors off and the roof down. But what maybe you might not think of is, off-roading is by and large a pretty low power usage scenario. And what that means is, you can get three or four hours worth of battery life out of the powertrain, or out of the, out of the 17 kilowatt hour battery. So it, it's a complicated powertrain, obviously. There's a lot of different moving parts in the vehicle. But what we've done in order to guarantee that this vehicle is ready for the market is uh, sort of an unprecedented level of validation. From Dubai to Alaska, from Moab to the Rubicon, four seasons on three continents. The team has done up three, over 3.2 million validation miles on this product to make sure that it earns the badge and it's, it's really a G. And for me, the most rewarding part of this project has been taking that, that know-how that we've gained in the company from other plug-in hybrids and then the off-road chops of a Wrangler and, and allowing our customers to combine yeah, the, the economic and the ecological benefits of a plug-in hybrid with the open air freedom, freedom machine Wrangler uh, experience that's so important. And so you get all the good numbers, but what you really get is smiles per gallon, as Jim said. I, I, I'm really excited to have you guys all experience it today.